You know, today is the anniversary of 9-11, and it's a day where we as people and we as individuals, you know, we take a deep breath, and we remember all the lives that we lost, and, and we remember all the families that are still grieving. We take a deep breath, and then we hold our breath, and we pray that we continue to be safe once again. You know, it, it, we always, we remember those that we lost, we remember those families, but we also remember um, those who fought valiantly um, during that time. We remember um, Flight 93. You know, out of all four of the airplanes that, you know, they chose this one, Flight 93, the hijackers chose this flight very, very badly. On the flight, there was a six foot one judo champion, a rugby player, a college quarterback, and among those, a weightlifter and a former paratrooper. And four of those were four heroes who charged the cabin that day and who took that plane down and saved lives by taking it down in Pennsylvania. Among those four heroes was Todd Beamer. You know, he had a pregnant wife. He was a, a family man from rural New, Jer New Jersey. And, you know, he carried a, a Tom Clancy novel with him with a Lord's Prayer bookmark. And it's kind of the, the, the hero that you would expect to be in the plane, the hero that the nation would expect. But one of those four heroes, you know, there was a different kind of hero. A hero um, that's no surprise to us, but I think that was a surprise to our nation. It's no surprise to us that he loved America, that he fought for America. You know, Mark Bingham was 31 years old. He was six foot four, 225 pounds. He was president of his fraternity in Berkeley College. He was a PR executive, a sportsman, played rugby, and Mark was gay. One of the things that I absolutely love, you know, is whenever um, they were in the air, you know, they recited the Lord's Prayer and Psalm 23 together. We know that from the phone calls that were made and they, you know, to think about all the different kinds of people that were there and they were praying together and they were saying that, you know, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And they said this together. And I love, you know, that they're, they're such different people, you know, that if, if, if someone like Mark Bingham and Todd Beamer and the different heroes that were on board, if they could come together and defend America and fight for courage and fight for goodness uh, and overcome those differences in the air, then certainly we can do the same on the ground. We can and we must. And before we watch this video, the last question I want you know, our nation to ask itself and for you to ask yourself is would you want Mark Bingham on, on your flight? Would you want Mark Bingham fighting next to you? I think the answer is a resounding yes. If you only met him for five minutes, you would remember him. And you can't say that about a lot of people. He was the kind of guy that if he decided to lead a charge, spontaneously, people would file behind him. He's really had an impact and he's really inspired a lot of, a lot of people. Um, we, we don't always choose the, the kind of hero that we, we want to be. It's now believed that the terrorists on Flight 93 intended to crash the airplane into the United States Capitol where I work. I may very well owe my life to Mark. Mark was a fierce and avid rugby player. He was in your face. He would take that ball and God help you finish his way. Oh! Yeah! That's what it did. The last team with which Mark played was a team of 45 men and women. And the field they played on was not a wide and grassy rugby field, it was a narrow cabin and cockpit of a Boeing 757 hurtling over the Pennsylvania countryside. 
we know Mark did something even before there was reports about it. We know Mark did something. And here's 10 stories that I know personally about Mark, about how he jumped into dangerous way to protect people. I'm sure you heard the story of when he was mugged and he disarmed the gun and beat up the two muggers until they ran away scared. I mean, you know, he's the guy who got gored in uh, running with the bulls in Spain and enjoyed it and wants to go back and do it again. I don't think he had really a sense of reality with respect to danger. He handled it. Oh, shit. oh my God. <laughs> we saw a Statue of Liberty. We saw Ellis Island. And I'm deeply in love. And uh, that's about it. All the good stuff. Yay. Yay. Mark and I had a very private relationship. The events of the last few weeks have changed all that but I'm so proud of, of what has been told and revealed. The fact that he was gay and a national hero, I think is an important message. Um, but the fact that he was willing to give up his life uh, for people he didn't know is a more important message. It's ironic that he's, he's kind of become this gay hero, I think, to a lot of people, because I think it's the last thing Mark would have wanted. When I was interviewed after 9-11, I'm talking about Mark, and they, people asked, the the gay question and asked me to elaborate on it, I, I always just said, you know, the only thing that this shows is that whenever groups of Americans act heroically, there may or may not be gay people among them, period. I'm gay and I never told anyone. And I was watching CNN one day and um, they were interviewing Alice. The more I read about Mark, I saw more similarities we both had. I came across his eulogy written by his friend Todd. There's a line in the eulogy and I carry it around with me. Do not let the fear of rejection keep you from showing up every day of your life. And that's what I was doing. I was being honest with myself or my friends or my family. And I contacted Alice and she talked me through this. I sat down with my friends and I told them I was gay. I never dreamt five years later that Mark, the man who saved everybody in the White House or the Capitol, saved me and directly. And he's a hero. The fact that he is seen as a hero is, like, I can just picture Mark wherever, wherever he happens to be, going, they're talking about me, they're talking about me. <laughs> just like, he would be overwhelmed at the response. Today, we celebrate Mark's life and keep his memory alive as we dedicate the Mark Bingham Recreation Center. Whether as a small child deciding on his own identity or charging into the cockpit of Flight 93, Mark's courage will not be forgotten. I know that we all miss him. Not a day goes by that is not affected by the loss and the lack of my son. Today, though, is a day of joy for coming together in thanksgiving for the life of Mark Bingham. On the last day of his life, he was able to rally together with a handful of very plucky men and help to save hundreds of lives on the ground just by speaking up, showing some courage, showing some teamwork. He taught me how to live my life, and I'll be forever in his shadow. I, I loved him. I always will.
even though we could not marry or teach our children in your schools because of who he wants to love you think is breaking God's rules but he stood up on that Tuesday morning and in the terror he was brave and he made his choice and without a doubt hundred lives he must have saved now you cannot change this you can't erase this you can't pretend this is not the truth you cannot change this you can't erase this you can't pretend Thank you. 